So I was asked a question about um, how to approach calculating the neutral current in a star connected system by a student. And they had tackled the first question you see on the screen here with three line currents, three line currents and also all at unity power factor. And this is similar to a question we covered in class. In fact, it's the exact same question, except the values of the current are slightly different. Um, and the student in question approached the second question here. Um, but they made a slight mistake in their approach, although it's only a small mistake and it was a, only a slight change you'd have to make to make it correct. But I thought I'd go through a solution here and make it available on a video so it can be viewed over and over. Um, but the question I'm looking at is question two and it describes a three single phase loads on a star connected network and it gives us the magnitude of the currents and the power factor. So to move to the overhead camera, I've kind of sketched out what that system would look like where we have our three phases, our three single phase loads that are star connected. So they're all connected to the same point and the values of the currents are given here as well. Um, so in relation to what each of these are, I've used some colors as well, but you know, we've essentially got I1 flowing in this load I2 flowing into this load and I3 flowing into this load. And then the question is asking us then, well, what is the neutral current flowing back through the neutral part of the system? So let's have a look at that. Um, and as a reminder, you know, when we tackled this question uh, with the all three loads at unity power factor, I used a phaser diagram to help explain what's happening. But this is a three phase system, so we have three phase voltages. Um, and as such, we have to represent those on a phaser diagram. So this is V1 or VR phase, whatever your preference is. We've got VS, which is lagging behind by 120 degrees. And we have VT, which is lagging behind that by 120 degrees, or leading VR by 120 degrees. VT. So I've used the same colors to match up here. Now, you know, this is the system we're dealing with. Beforehand, we had dealt with just having one phase associated with our system, but now that we have three phases, we have to look at it slightly different. So the first step to working out these questions is we need to work out what the phase angle is for each of these currents. And we do that using the power factor and whether it's leading or lagging. So for this first one here, we want to get the phase, we'll call it theta one. It's the cosine inverse of our power factor, 0 0.707. So if we pass that into our calculator, we get cosine inverse of 0 0.707, and it comes out at 45 degrees. Now, I'm going to put a minus in here as well because it's a lagging power factor. And we'll show you what that means in a, in a second. So we can work out the phase then for the remaining angle, for the remaining currents. So theta two cosine inverse of the same value. So it too has the same phase, but we'll see how it differs because of the three phase voltages in a moment. And then finally, theta three, same method, 0 0.86 of our power factor. And I'll just double check what the value of that one is. So it's the cosine inverse. So my calculator here, it's shift cosine for that. And 0 0.86. So this is closer to 1. So our angle should be less than 45. So 30 point, I'll go with 30.7. And it's minus 30.7 because it's also 
a lagging power factor. So what we've done here is we've gotten the phases of each of our currents relevant to the voltage that's driving it. So let's mark those on our phasor diagram to help us explain what that means. And I'll do them on a dashed line in the same color just so it splits them up. So our first one, I1, is 21 amps at minus 45 degrees. So this is I1, which is related to the OR phase. So it's at zero, minus 45 degrees. So essentially down this direction. Again, this phasor diagram is not the scale. But for the demonstration, it doesn't matter. But that angle there, is the minus 45 degrees because on our phasor diagram this is zero degrees this is 90 degrees this is 180 degrees and this is 270 degrees so let's do the same for these currents here so i2 is off of vs now here's the difference this has been driven by this voltage. So this angle is relative to this. So we know that Vs lags Vr by minus 120 degrees. So we have to go minus 120 to our voltage, minus another 45 to get the angle of our current. So that is minus 120. That's minus 165 degrees. So that's essentially you're coming back minus 120 to the voltage minus another 45. So our I2 is here and the overall angle for it is minus 165 degrees. So we're taking into account that the voltage that's driving the current is already lagging by minus 120 and minus the next 45 of the angle. And then we do the same for this angle here. So Vt is lagging by minus 240 or that's the same as saying leading by 120 because it's a circle. So the angle for I3 is going to be 120 degrees because that's the, that's what's driving it minus 30.7 so we get 89.3 degrees which is slightly less than 90 so if we're looking at it on our phasor diagram i3 then is 12 amps that's the magnitude of it and that angle in there is 89.3 degrees so in our first question all of the currents were in phase with the voltages they're all at a unity power factor so you know i3 was in phase with vt i2 was in phase with vs and i1 is in phase with vr so we just used the actual angles of those voltages but because now we're taking into account the fact that each of these currents is lagging behind the voltage that's driving it we have to calculate the currents using the phases sorry calculate the overall angles of the currents using each of their phases and then we approach the question like we do with any of these where we have multiple currents that aren't at right angles to each other we have to work out the horizontal and the vertical components separately. So I like to use a table if I'm ever doing this, where if I want a horizontal element, it's I, the magnitude, times cosine of the angle, and the vertical element is I times the sine of the angle. So we've got I1 is equal to 21 amps. Uh, 
I2 is equal to 18 amps. And I3 is 12 amps. So let's work out those first. This one here will be 21 times the cosine of minus 45 degrees. And this one is 21 times the sine of minus 45 degrees. Try that out here. 21 times the cosine of minus 45. Make sure you put in this sign. And we're getting 14.85 amps. And this one is 21 times the sine of minus 45 degrees. So minus 14.85, which is correct because the sign is important here because look, it tells us that this I1 is made up of some positive horizontal part and some negative, because it's going down, vertical part, which is right. We can see it on our phaser that that is the case. So we will repeat the process then for the remaining two currents. We've got 18 times the cosine of minus 45. No, apologies, I'm getting ahead of myself. Good thing I made that mistake. The angle we have to use in here is not the individual phase, but in fact, it's the overall angle of our current. So for I2, it's minus 165 degrees. 18 times the sine of minus 165 degrees. And you can kind of, if you're drawing the phaser when doing these questions, I find it helpful, is you can see that this is going to be made up of some negative vertical part and, and a negative horizontal part. So these two numbers should be negative when I do this. Let's pass it into our calculator and see. 18 times the cosine of minus 165 is minus... 17.3 to minus 17.4 let's round it up amps and then this one should be quite a small number compared to that 18 times the sine of minus 165 so minus 4.7 amps And we'll do the same here. That'll be 12 times the cosine. Now the angle in this one is 89.3. Some nice value there. And this one will be 12 times the sine of 89.3 degrees. Let's work those out. We'll do it on the calculator as well so we can see it. 12 times the cosine of 89.3, so 0 0.14 amps. And this one is 12 times the sine of 89.3. So that comes out at 11.99. So I'm just gonna call that, no, I better stick with the 11.9 amps. So what we've done at this point here is we've got all of the horizontal parts of each of these currents. So there's some horizontal that way, some horizontal that way, and a little bit on the right. So what we're actually doing here is we're working out the total horizontal elements, and it's those three values added up. So let's do that. 14.85 minus 17.4 plus 0 0.14. I'm getting minus 2.41 amps on my own end. 
And the same thing here, we broke down each of these phasers for the currents into their up and down, their vertical parts. So we can just add each of them up to get the total vertical part. So it's on my end, it's minus 14.85, minus 4.7, plus 11.9. I'm getting minus 7.65. So that tells us then that the overall current when we add these three together, which is our neutral current, is going to be made up of some horizontal part that's minus 2.4 that way, and some vertical part which is minus 7.65. So the overall neutral current is somewhere in this direction. Again, this is not the scale, so, but somewhere in this direction on our phasor diagram, I neutral. But because we have the horizontal and vertical parts, we can now add it up using our Pythagoras formula. So that neutral current then is square root of the horizontal part squared plus the vertical part squared square root of minus 2.41 squared plus minus 7.65 to be squared now to save space here i'm going to put this in on a three calculator in one go but you may not want to do that it's up to you so the square root of minus 2.41 squared plus minus 7.65 to be squared. I'm getting about 8.02 amps then as my neutral current. Now the question doesn't ask for it, but if you want, you can work out the phase as well of the neutral current using the same rule as we would do it for any of them as the horizontal part of whatever we're looking for over the total part. But I'll let you try that out yourself. You should see that it's an angle like this. So that's how you approach one of the questions where you calculate the overall neutral current but without when put in the situation where we're not using unity power factors anymore. So in this case, our three currents were lagging. And you can take this and approach, you can take this approach and apply it to the rest, rest of the questions. And just to show you the question I was on again, so we're clear, it's question two that you see on the screen at the moment. Okay, thanks for watching.